Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is November the 18th, 2016. It seems that Barack Obama is concerned about fake news. He says it's a threat to our democracy. Let's check this out. If we are not serious about facts and what's true and what's not, and particularly in an age of social media where so many people are getting uh, their information in sound bites and snippets off their phones. Uh, if we can't discriminate between serious arguments and propaganda, then we have problems. So I do agree with the president. I think it's very important to distinguish between fact and fiction. I have Vicki Davis here. Vicki Davis is a retired computer systems analyst and a programmer turned internet researcher and writer. As an internet researcher, she applies her systems analyst skills and focuses her research on the revolution in government from a systems perspective. She has two websites, The Technocratic Tyranny and Channeling Reality. She also writes and maintains TVOI News. So let's hear from Vicki. Vicki, you've got a beef with the Washington Post. What's up with that? One of their reporters gave me a call and uh, said that he was going to come out here and interview some people uh, in Twin Falls about the refugee issue, um, especially in view of uh, Donald Trump's win. Silly me. I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, so he came out here and he wrote an article and I thought that the article that he wrote um, really is a demonstration of what Obama was talking about in terms of uh, news that is actually propaganda and uh, uh, twisted facts and well if you twist it it's not a fact it's you know it's propaganda so um, anyway that's what I wanted to talk about because uh, it really is kind of a, a hit piece on on the people out here who are really just ordinary concerned citizens and it seems in the environment in this country today if you exercise your right to free speech and your opinion goes against the mainstream media, then you're a racist, a xenophobe, a white supremacist, uh, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Hillary Clinton had a list of uh, adjectives to describe people who, who don't go along with the mainstream agenda of the destruction of the United States. Okay, well Vicki, why don't we get into this article We'll go over it piece by piece, and you tell me what's up with it. We'll start with the title here. In Twin Falls, Idaho, codependency of whites and immigrants faces a test. That, yeah. to me, is very racist <laughs> from the get-go, but that's just me. Yeah, well, people on the left think in terms of colors. They don't really discuss anything in terms of the issues in terms of the facts. It's all about uh, color or gender or um, status and you know if um, if you're white, if you're um, not a lesbian or a gay or if you're actually a legal American born on this soil then you're bad just right from the get-go. Yeah, yeah. I think that that just about describes it. So let's see what he did and said. He's very descriptive. Sunrise was still almost three hours away. Bob Schmidt rubbed his eyes, straightened his camouflage hat, and climbed into the driver's seat of his van. He was about to begin his daily drive through this politically deep red region, picking up refugees and dropping them off at work. Yeah, a 61-year-old man who um, lost his job at 
Glanbia a few years ago. Glanbia is a cheese factory. And uh, so now he's driving a shuttle bus for $8 an hour. Well, in the article it says that there is uh, um, very low unemployment here, but it, it, if, um, if there was a shortage of workers, Bob Schmidt would not be making $8 an hour doing a job like driving a shuttle bus. So really good point <laughs> yeah. all right we'll continue and just jump in blocks okay. away was the auditorium during the summer an anti-islam activist warned the crowd that radicalism and hatred was rising throughout the world including in twin falls nearby was the family restaurant where one night earlier a team of self-avowed defenders of freedom had reveled in Donald Trump's victory and talked about being on guard against Sharia law. Okay, well, let, let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. We know, we know that our soldiers are fighting over in the Middle East. We know that there is a global jihad, a group called ISIS or ISIL, they call them ISIL sometimes, or they call them Daesh. Um, they want to build an Islamic State. They consider the United States the enemy, and um, they'd like to kill us. And so uh, they are trying to take over states in the Middle East, nation states over in the Middle East. And um, Islam is a political system. It's not really, uh, it has a religious component to it, but it is a political system. And there's just a few of us that are saying, wait a minute, they'd like to kill us, so why are you bringing them here? Exactly, exactly. Let's continue. On the horizon were the county's farms and factories where employers said they would be lost without the low-wage workforce from Iraq, Afghanistan, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Refugees whose best chance in the United States meant a seat in Schmidt's van and a ship that started at 6 a.m. Yeah. Well, you know, Idaho's been here a long time and we've always had agriculture and we've always had uh, plants, you know, potato factories, sugar factories, things like that. And you know what? We never needed anybody from Iraq, Afghanistan, or sub Saharan Africa. We got along just fine without those people. So why are they bringing them in here? Well, I'll tell you why. It's cheap labor. It's slavery. I mean, the way the guy even puts it, it sounds like freaking slavery. I'm offended. Well, later on in the article, he said that they're working 12 hours a day. And um, if... Uh, these refugees that come in, they're putting them through workforce development, which means that the state is paying to, quote, train those workers at the tune of $3,000 per head. So, so they're bringing them in. We are paying to train them while they're taking jobs that there are just plenty enough American young men to be doing them. Well, we're also paying for their flights in, and we're also paying for them for a place to live, and we're also subsidizing their food in the form of food stamps, what's it called nowadays, SNAP. So they're getting the whole nine yards, and in the meantime, they're bowing down to a, a, a god, whatever you want to call it, that says in their book over a hundred times to chop off Christians' heads and how exactly to do it. I mean, do they think we're that stupid? Maybe, maybe some people are, but people are not that stupid to to believe this story. But I do think they are that scared. They're afraid to stand up and say anything. Yes, but I mean. See, and this is where I get people commenting sometimes on my videos. Wow, that's a really good video. Who are you going to show it to? 
Well, I've only spent 40 hours putting this video together and researching to put it out for you for free. So why can't you take this information that I've given you for free and stand up with me and shout the same thing? Because if, if people are scared that the government's going to come after them for speaking up, the more people that speak up, the more of a chance no one will be able to get locked up because that's how a revolution is made without picking up one gun. You know what is amazing to me is that um, it's like people think they're living in a movie or something. Like they, they know that it's happening, but it's like it's not real or something. Right. Well, you have <laughs> these YouTubers that every... Every Islamic attack, every terrorist attack, they say is fake. So these people that are truly dead, I, I know that, that if one of my family members were killed due to a jihadist over here, and then I were to hear someone on the internet, on YouTube, saying that, that my loved one was not killed through a jihadist attack, I, I would be so upset. I really would. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. There, there is a lot of uh, disinformation on the internet, and and I do believe that that is intentional. Uh, I, uh, I know it's intentional, and it's really so that uh, it's a destabilization tactic, so that people don't know what the truth is and they they don't know where to find the truth can't find the truth because you can't get it from the mainstream media um, they are just they've become just propaganda rags you know you might as well have Baghdad Bob stationed at you know each mainstream media outlet right so um, and and that's done intentionally because when people can't sort things through and know what the truth is, they just turn it all off. Right. Shut it out. Right. Or you get people like you and me who just are obsessed with finding the truth. <laughs> yeah, and that I am. I certainly am. Shall we continue? Okay. All right. So is everybody ready? Schmidt said Tuesday morning once in his once his van was filled. Isn't that great that that he's taking all these people that are getting free food, that got a free ride over here, that's getting free housing, and then they're being hauled to work. Well, don't forget they're getting free medical too. Oh yeah, absolutely. They get health care. We don't. They the, they, they do. do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, and, and you can't make this up. You know what? This is globalization. This is the inverted reality of globalization, where um, un in, under a global governance system, nation states don't matter anymore, borders don't matter anymore, because it uh, governance occurs at the global level, right? We're just one big happy global village, just like Hillary said. You know, and so um, they're importing the uh, refugees from all of these um, Muslim countries and giving them jobs and giving them everything. Basically, they are displacing our Native American population. Yes, they're doing that throughout the world, too. Because they have to de destabilize the nations where these people are coming from in order to get them to come over here. Am I right? Why are they called yes. refugees? Yes, they are. They are doing that to all nations in the world. They have globalization has turned every nation state against its own people. Right. So it's globalization through destabilization. Well, de destabilization is in order to implement globalization. <laughs> That's because crazy. They, I know. They have to. They 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 want to break the concept of uh, na national identity. 
of what it is to be an American. They have to break that. They have to break the idea of American citizenship, break the idea of borders. I have a quote here that I, I want to read to everybody. Okay, This is Henry Morgenthau, and he was the Secretary of the Treasury under FDR in 1945. And the um, um, plan for globalization for a global government began at least this far back. It actually went farther, but when they really started working on it. But here's what he said, Treasury Secretary under FDR. We can hardly expect the nation state to make itself superfluous, at least not overnight. Rather, what we must aim for is really nothing more than caretakers of a bankrupt international machine which will have to be transformed slowly into a new one. The transition will not be dramatic, but a gradual one. People will still cling to national symbols. Oh Let's my remember, gosh. We are the Americans who are clinging to our national symbols. You know, the flag, um, the the Ten Commandments, our churches, our um, Pledge of Allegiance, Christmas, you know, everything that was culturally American. But they're really trying to get rid of all of that so that we can have one big happy global village, just like Hillary said, you know. That is the first time I've ever heard that quote, and, and it's incredible. I mean, another way that they're making this money, and it has been proven in congressional hearings, that we are arming not only so-called Syrian rebels, but we are freedom fighters, they call them, which are none other than ISIS. But we are also arming the Mexican drug cartels in Mexico through Fast and Furious and many other things where the, the globalists are making money off of the heroin trade since uh, we took over the fields in Afghanistan in 2010. We saw Geraldo Rivera in a field of poppy that our soldiers were guarding. And all of that money, the heroin trade that's getting everybody in America addicted to heroin, and the gun running that has been going on forever, for more years than I've been alive, um, it's all connected to these globalists, and that's who's making the money off of all of this. I watched a hearing on home scam security today, and um, what they were talking about was homegrown Islamic terrorism, because there is a global jihad. That's what ISIS is about. And, you know, they're, they're talking about... Um, uh, Muslims, I'm going to say it, Muslims in this country, and they may have even been born in this country, but they get radicalized. Okay, and so when, when Home Scam Security talks to Congress about it, they're actually talking about Islamic terrorism. But on the ground where we live, the, the people that Home Scam Security is going after are Americans actual Americans who are trying to stand up, trying to, to say, hey, we've got a problem out here. We are being invaded by, uh, you know, these uh, Muslims. They're being brought in by the boatloads as fast as they can get them in here. So so while on the one hand they're saying, well, you know, we've, we've got Islamic terrorism, there's a global jihad, we're, lo we're losing our jobs and our towns to these people. And our cultures, our, our American culture is being um, destroyed. So, you know, how do we reconcile these, these two things? It's propaganda and it's fake news and it's coming from the mainstream media. Right. And they're the ones who get paid to do this. I don't make one earthly penny off of this. I don't make I don't make any money on this. I I work on this every day, every day from the moment I wake up until I can't keep my head up anymore. I'm at my computer. I'm reading. I'm writing. 
I'm doing everything I possibly can because this country is in trouble. And you know, Vicki, I was thinking about this the other day. It's funny that you should bring this up because I was thinking about George Soros and Hillary Clinton and what they've done around the globe. And they have successfully pitted everyone on the planet just about against them, especially George Soros. You know what George Soros does? His color revolutions, these color revolutions that he's funded all over the world, that's to take down governments. Right. And what they are replacing it with is a globalist management structure. Okay. Where there there is no loyalty to the people. There is no nation state. There is no borders. Um, all there is is a territory with people in it and in order to break the nation state it's important to have foreigners move in for destabilization and deculturalization wow and that's that's what they are doing with the importation with this mass importation of muslims what we did have which is basically a christian country right so right. there's nothing nothing more destabilizing to a Christian country than having Muslims move in, right? Exactly. Especially, especially because their religion is a political system. It's a totalitarian system disguised as a religion. Yeah. And and that's why the globalists are using Islam and spreading Muslims throughout the planet to destabilize all the nations of the earth. They are in effect pushing the caliphate because they are they are behind the caliphate. They are helping the caliphate because the that will help them in their journey to globalization. Bingo, you got it. That was a good description of it. And you know what? It really helps to separate the the democrats from the communists the fascist communists that have uh, infiltrated in into our country and into the democratic party um, because the democrats democrat women worked for a long time you know for equal rights for women and now if you listen to Democrat women, they're just all for this, you know, bringing these Muslims in here. And so what they're actually saying is, yeah, let's bring back second class status for women. Right. <laughs> I mean, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you reconcile that? How do democratic women reconcile that? You're right. Uh, I, well, in my mind, they do that by, um, their their mouth goes where the money is you know what i mean it's yeah. like they got a wad of cash and their mouth just says where the cash goes you know uh -huh. well and that's pretty much every everything that this country is about now there's no such thing really uh, as political philosophy and and a belief system of um that our constitutional principles were founded on everything is about the money Absolutely. Except, except for the few um, hangers on, or what do, what do they call us? Bitter clingers? Yeah. <laughs> that, are, that are bitterly clinging to our Constitution, our guns, and our freedom of speech. <laughs> right. And, and just think about it. Our country would not be what it is right now if our system was not so fascist. Is Our system is Mussolini's dream come true. It, oh, absolutely. Anyway, shall we continue? Sure. Yep. So, uh, yes, came a groan from the back. So he goes and picks up all these people that are getting a free ride. And um, he's making a whole eight bucks an hour driving them around. And um, they're groaning because <laughs> they don't want to be a slave, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Twin Falls is now a testing ground for whether the bitter cultural divisions intensified by this year's presidential campaign can recede in favor of codependency that marks many communities 
with large white and immigrant populations. In the southern Idaho city of 45,000, the question surrounds a growing Muslim population. Across the country, people in meatpacking towns and agricultural areas are wondering whether their communities will hold on to a supply of Hispanic workers and other foreign laborers crucial to these industries. Again, that sounds like slavery to me. Yeah, it is. I mean, they can't survive without slave labor. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, at at the point when the refugee is no longer a refugee and they're off on their own, they they continue to bring in more refugees. So, what they're they're just replacing our native population. Exactly. So, it's like they are feeding feeding the employers and cre- creating poverty with a race to the bottom. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because they they keep refreshing the the low wage workers with more low wage workers. So when does that stop? Right. When everybody is living in a a, a mud hut in the dirt, you know, barely subsisting. I mean, what do the, what do these people want? Right. They want to destabilize. They want to destabilize. Look what George Soros is paying all these protesters to do right now. I've read somewhere, I think Dabu or someone did a video about he pays them, I think, $15 an hour and they get health benefits and stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, and and look at all on the Patriot side, the, the people that would like to keep America, America. I, I, I donate my time and, and, I spend more money than I have to spend. You know, I've got credit card debt because I I think this is so important to do. Um, there's no help on the right. So that what that really shows you is that uh, we are in a fascist country, in, in a, a fascist system, and. Um, the wealthy are, are really paying people to bring this country down. Yes, because I'm in the same boat as you. I mean, and, and then people say to me, are you prepared? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, hopefully they'll bring all the credit card companies down so that... <laughs> yeah. yeah, are you prepared? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I have some rice and some beans. Right. I'm, I'm hoping that, that you know... I, I'm doing the same thing as you. I'm donating every free minute that I have. Meanwhile, my family have been through stages where they think I'm going insane. Well, now with Trump, I mean, I, I still am not sure if he's on the up and up each day. Um, I think he may be, but then again, I don't know. I haven't started researching his picks, but... I mean, it what from what he was saying, it woke up a lot of my family members to the reality that what I've been saying and why I've given up my life to do what I'm doing is true, you know. I, I that has happened to me too, you know. The uh, people that thought I was um, kind of out there uh, realized with Donald, he gave some great speeches, some just phenomenally great speeches and uh, that has helped but we still need people to participate you know freedom is not free right and and all these people I mean I could be I own a business and and I'm trying to go out of business because I just want to do this how am I going to survive I, I am married my husband has a job and he's working a lot more hours because I choose not to. I mean, I'm fortunate. I, you know, I don't know how you survive. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Well, I, you know, I have Social Security, so I'm okay. But I mean, I I scrape by, but um, I'm I'm not complaining. I I this is where I need to be. This is what I need to be doing. So right. I do it. Me too. Me too, and I, I actually enjoy it. I I enjoy it, I guess. 
<laughs> but like it's so funny like when my mom comes up to visit and I'll be telling her about something and she'll say something that it just triggers me and I'm like oh my god you just connected something and she's like what or I'll she'll say she'll be saying something I'll be like oh my god and I'll start jumping up and down and going crazy she's like what 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 did I say what <laughs> And I can't get it out. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm so used to showing. I'm I'm like I, I gotta show you. You know, it gets to where it's hard to talk to regular people who are not um, researchers on the internet because you, once you get into it so deep and you realize that how how much we've been lied to, how deep the lies are, and um, uh, things are just not the way they are presented to be by the mainstream it gets really difficult to explain that to people oh yes oh yes oh yes so I, don't, I don't even try anymore I just well I I still haven't given that up because I did a video um and I think I, I made it too long maybe maybe I didn't do a good job but I spent a heck of a lot of time on it and uh, I did a video that shows how that we are dealing heroin. <laughs> we are the biggest drug dealers and partners with ISIS and the Mexican cartels. And I showed all mainstream media um, videos in it except for one. And I really tried hard because I don't know how many times... I have told people face to face that our government is bringing in, is trafficking the cocaine and heroin in here. And we've teamed up with the cartels and ISIS and they don't believe me. They laugh at me. Well, I, I think I proved it by that video. So, yeah, well, I, I, I think that speaking on the radio, that's, that's a good way to reach people because then it's their choice to watch and listen. But to try to one on one, you know, convince people in your own community, it's impossible. It is. Unless they're ready to hear it. I and I'm such a headstrong person that it upsets me when when I've researched something and spent a lot of time and I, I have compiled so much evidence that I know exactly what I'm talking about and I know what I'm saying. And someone will say to me, I don't know if that's true. You know, I'm basing what I just told you off of congressional testimony and congressional records and court hearings. How much more proof do you need? So you're you're right. Showing videos of it just, you know, it helps me. It, yeah. It's against the law to lie to Congress. <laughs> <laughs> really? Hillary needs to hear about that. Does she know that? <laughs> more importantly, does Comey know that? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. You know that, speaking of that, that's what woke up my sister. I did a, a video on James Comey, and he is heading up this drug enforcement thing. Him, Loretta Lynch, and the DEA guy, all three of them are in, involved with the cartels and the banks in one form or another, either inadvertently or overtly. And I showed in the video about Comey, and she said when, when she saw James Comey, because she went to this big event thing, you know, Chasing the Dragon, they did a video, a movie, like a documentary, and she went, you know, with with her group, and James Comey and all, Loretta Lynch and all were there speaking, and she was in shock, because she knows what they really are, because I've done videos on them, you know, so... <laughs> crazy so where were we let's see we need to take the time to understand one another said schmidt 61 paid eight dollars an hour by a staffing company the hate in our country has gotten worse you'd think that schmidt would be a little angry <laughs> well yeah you would think so if if but you know maybe he can't afford to be I don't know. It's hard to say. I, well, he's kind of at the mercy of mainstream TV to give him his information, and so he's kind of living in an information bubble. Yeah. You know, there are many of very intelligent people 
who are living in that information bubble and there is no excuse, you know, because the information's out there. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, everything I do, everything I write about is um, mainstream, legitimate sources. You know, I go to uh, C-SPAN, watch hearings, I go to the uh, Thomas, which is the uh, Congress's website, I go to think tanks, to university websites, institutes like Brookings, you know, all credible sources. And it's all there. You just have to read it. You have to go find it. That's all. Because the mainstream media is not going to tell you about it. Do you know the Brookings Institute was heavily funded by the Muslim Brotherhood? They get, no, I didn't. They get almost, they get either half or more than half of their funding through the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, isn't that interesting? That's it's nice. freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's continue. <laughs> the, okay. the, um, go okay, ahead. Well, let's, let's skip down to this part. Uh, it's subheading, Crime Energizes the Movement. Um, this is a, a classic example of how the mainstream media leaves out information um, to make it make things seem different than it was. Like for example, he says in this paragraph, one member made a presentation about government overreach. And then and then local resident Adrian Arp, an agronomist, stood up. Well, I I did the presentation and it wasn't about government overreach. It was about globalization and how how they are taking over our country by setting up cross-jurisdictional committees where they take a slice of sovereignty from each jurisdiction that is involved in the collectivized unit. On this PowerPoint, what I was talking about was uh, globalization and the way um, globalization is intended to destroy the nation state, obviously, because they they want a world, a global federal system where the world organization is like our federal government and then nation states become states under this global totalitarian system. So the way they are doing that is they are creating overlays to our existing government structures. They are getting uh, our elected representative officials to sign contractual agreements to participate in these cross-jurisdictional organizations. Okay. So what, what, let me interrupt you. What kind of organizations are these, these cross-jurisdictional organizations? It, is there an example that you can give me, like a name of one of these organizations? Yes. Um, well, NAFTA. NAFTA is one, of course. That's NAFTA trade agreement, but there is the, you know, a NAFTA commission, North American something commission. And the TPP, over. is that one? as well yes. okay yes, that's a trade agreement and there is a con commission over that it's called the commission for environmental cooperation the CEC and um, they are a governing body that is composed of the highest level environmental authorities cabinet level or equivalent from Canada Mexico and the United States so, Vicki, do you think, have you listened to enough of Trump to to see if, if to know in your mind whether he's going to stop this globalism since he's going to renegotiate and everything? Well, what, what he said that convinced me, that sold me, is that he wants to either get out of these trade agreements or renegotiate them. 
Right. And then I heard someone say that, um, and I think it was on his transition team or whatever, one of his advisors, say that he they wanted to specifically negotiate if it's with Africa, he wants to just negotiate with Africa. If it's with Japan, he just wants to go negotiate with Japan. And that's nationalistic, national level to national level. And that's pretty much what we want, right? It's exactly what we want. It Before um, about 1979, uh, I don't know, the Kennedy round of trade was in 1962, I think. Before that, when they negotiated trade agreements, it was just about tariffs. That's all. You know, how, uh, how much are you going to pay to cross the border with your product? Okay. Um, in 1979, uh, they started harmonizing the laws with other countries. Basically, step by step, establishing a system of commercial law for a one world commercial system. Okay, now if you look at this uh, slide that I have up there, on redrawing jurisdictions. All of those zones, those regional overlays to our existing government structures, they're all economic zones. Okay, you see national borders? Okay, national borders are uh, replaced by the Regional Economic Union, which is of course NAFTA. To me, a national border is a geographic kind of thing. How is that replaced by a, an economic how can you replace something that is a geographical line with an economic union with Tre treason by treaty oh okay that's exactly what it is and the media presents it as if it's something different as if it's just a trade agreement just having to do with products well that's not really true I mean, most of the agreement is about harmonization of our laws and um, basically eliminating our borders. In 1983, Ronald Reagan signed a treaty with Mexico, it's called the La Paz Treaty, and it created an international zone on the border uh, 60, 60 miles on either side, uh, I think it was 100 kilometers which I guess is about 60 miles on either side. And uh, it was supposedly for border cleanup. And the two officials that were in charge of that were the EPA administrator on our side and the equivalent position on the Mexican side. And um, what they allowed that entity, it, basically they carved out piece of the United States on our border and created an overlay structure and um, they allowed the overlay the that territory on the border to be managed by EPA officials they allowed them to be self-funded and they allowed them to invite in anybody that they wanted to to participate in the management of the zone, including the United Nations. Oh my gosh! I yeah, it's the most open uh, agreement I I've ever read. I when I read it, I just could not believe that attorneys uh, for the United States would let him sign that agreement because it was totally wide open to to add whatever whatever you want to add later on as uh, as an annex and to anyone getting in there and ruling over that specific area however they desired right or no yeah yeah, yeah because it's under the management of the Environmental Protection Agency. So really, do, is it an area where people live? Is there is it a populated area in America? Oh, sure, yeah. El Paso's right there on the border. Oh, it's my gosh. It's in the national zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh.
So they call it the Constitution Free Zone. That's just what I was going to ask you. Does that go in with the Constitution Free Zone? So um, Obama, in effect, took that Constitution Free Zone where bureaucrats rule and did it around the entire United States of America, right? Well, yeah, because once you're if you think of that zone on the border um, as covering up the border and um, once you're in that zone it's kind of like a bridge over the border think of it like a bridge over the border you never you never cross the border you see because once you once you're in the zone on the Mexican side you don't get out of that international zone until you're 60 miles inside the United States so you never actually cross the border. So that's what they're going to do all over the world is they're going to stretch that because they're slowly in increments stretching that zone like Obama did. He made it a hundred miles around the whole United States. So in a few years, in a few presidencies down the road, I guess another president will make it 200 miles and then they'll just keep slowly working it well they do, they don't actually need to do that because they they did something that was really very very clever um i don't know if you ever saw the map where mexico had a deal with china uh, china china was going to build deep sea ports down in the southern part of mexico and um they were going to build a, a highway with inland ports uh, throughout Mexico going across the international zone and coming up into the United States into Kansas City the Kansas City smart port you heard of that right no not really no oh, okay well here's what the deal is and this is this is very clever under international commerce um, the the trip is considered from point poor the point of origin to the point of destination and all stops at ports in between don't really count if you're taking a load of cargo from Singapore to Oklahoma City and you dock at a port in southern Mexico and you are on an interstate type uh, transportation system and you stop only at inland ports aka intermodal commerce zones under international law you have a right to have your cargo pass across borders of nation states to areas that are landlocked okay okay now I've heard of that yeah it's um it that was uh done in 1921 I think it's called the Barcelona Declaration. Basically what they've done just very simply is that they've turned our interstate highway system into shipping lanes. If you think of it like that, shipping lanes and then the inland ports are like these uh gas super stations along the interstate, you know, truck stops along the interstate. Mhm. Mm those are inter intermodal commerce zones or inland ports. Oh, wow. So they turned our country into a land bridge between two bodies of water, basically. I did a report on that, and, and it's uh, pretty extensive research went into that. I don't understand these systems at all. I'm clueless. So let's get back to the article. Vicki, where did you want to start at back here? The, the next line down here where he, where he says, Davis, the retiree, said she once earned 125000 in the computer industry in Manhattan and lost her job because of outsourcing and a visa program that paved the way for foreigners. That's a absolutely false. I didn't say that. What I said was that um, the H-1B visa program destroyed the industry, the job market for Americans. And um, I, I left. I left Manhattan in '95, you know. So they hadn't even started that too much at that point. So, uh, so he he just. I don't know where he got that. He just 
made it up, I guess. The anti-immigration sentiment in Twin Falls began to take off in April of 2015 when the CSI director erroneously said Twin Falls was set to receive Syrians. Well, he said the anti-immigration sentiment began to take off in April. I think it actually started before that. And really, though, if you think about it, Vicki, that's, that's opinion. He's expressing an opinion. Well, yes, you're, it, it is. He is expressing an opinion. And, and that's what propaganda is. That's what Obama described as is opinion mixed with half-truths. So is there anything else that you think that you should add to this, Vicki, to get the truth out instead of these lies? Just the fact that I, I will write an article about this, and I uh, will highlight the, the parts that actually be easier to highlight the, the few things that he got right. But this Washington Post article, but it is classic propaganda up to and including the picture of me that is on there. That photographer took about 20 pictures and she picked, if not the worst picture, then damn close to it. Because the sun was in my eyes, the wind was blowing my hair back. And, um, you know, she picked the worst picture to publish. The whole thing is propaganda classic absolutely classic and that the way it goes mm -hmm. so if you know o obama is right in what he's saying he's just wrong in who he's pointing the finger at it's not the alternative media that's lying it's the mainstream media and they have been doing it for a very very long time yeah and it's scared the crap out of them now because they've noticed that people are agreeing with Trump as they're saying no he's crazy he's crazy he's lying mm -hmm. yeah. well that you know that's probably why uh, Chico didn't want to mention the the subject that I gave my little presentation on it's 35 minutes on um, globalization and I talked about regionalism privatization and treason by contract which is which is what we have and what they what they're doing is they're redrawing jurisdictional boundaries and um, they're putting uh, basically Soviets uh, over the top of as regional governing structures a lot of money a lot of federal money flows into the county level and that buys off our public officials okay and the the privatization of government services uh, has made it real easy to to do favors for politicians you know by creating jobs for their wife and children and husband and you know family members you know to put them into business doing some social job and uh, or so you know social function and so um that's what I was talking about. And so I'm sure, you know, he really didn't want to mention that because they would rather try to paint me as some kind of uh, sovereign citizen or something talking about government overreach. Well, no, that's not that's not it. It's globalization. Right. Well, uh, I don't know, Vicki. I think I would like to see this presentation that you do on globalization. If you'd be willing, maybe we could do a live stream. I think it'd be great because you are so knowledgeable on the functionality and the setup of the globalization process. I, I think it would be great to do a, a live stream with you and maybe have some interactive chatting here as you do it. Would would you be willing? Sure. Yep, we can do that. Well, that's great. I have a good start on this presentation. I don't have everything in here because I, I only had 35 minutes, but I can add, add enough to it to give you a, a good idea of how this the shadow government basically operates. Oh, that would be wonderful. We could we could show how the shadow government operates, and I'm sure you have every last detail down because um, just to talk to you about it, you are so knowledgeable and you have enlightened me 
over the period that we've been friends. Well, we'll close this out and end this up. Is there anything else you want to say before we head on, head on out of here? I would just like to uh, tell people that um, we really are losing our country. Um, it is a complex situation that's going on uh, for sure. But, you know, if you just keep your compass headed at, at that American flag and remember what it is to be an American, we'll be all right, you know, but, um, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy at all. Stand up and help because we need you. Let's see, there's something I used to type when I was learning how to type is, now's the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. And, and it really is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Vicki. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off, and as always, I've got your six.